A. There is a minimum distribution rule. When you turn 70 and a half, there's something referred to as a required minimum distribution. You have to pull this money out once you get to 70 and a half with a traditional IRA vehicle. The failure to do that is 50% of the penalty, 50% uh, of the amount that's required and not paid. So if you should have, uh, if you should have been paid 10,000, but you only paid 4,000, what's the penalty? Well, what you should have been paid, the difference is $6,000. So the penalty is going to be $3,000. So there's a huge penalty for not making. Uh, required distributions. What about other tax questions? There are KEO plans. These are essentially for usually self-employed um, uh, individuals, uh, entrepreneurs, right? These are just special kinds of retirement plans that are tied to IRA vehicles, right? So again, you have to start this reduction or withdrawals at 70 and a half. Premature distributions are, are are penalized 10%. There are some exceptions to that, but in general, premature distributions are, are a challenge. Premature meaning prior to 59 and a half. What happens if you put too much money into account? Again, there's a 10% penalty on that excess. Again, we already talked about the insufficient distribution piece. So there are many questions that we have to ask Moving forward is like, what happens when I get to retirement? How do I get my money out? How do I pay taxes? So the question of how you get your money out is there are really three ways to do this. You can create an annuity, right? You're going to create an annuity. Insurance companies can guarantee life income payments or even a variety of different matters. Could be life income, could be for a certain period. There could be joint and survivor benefits, but you can create the process for which to do this. The tax treatment of this is that parts of each payment, part of it is going to be taxable and part of it might not be taxable. It kind of depends on how the annuity is set up and with what kind of money. If this is all money that comes from a transfer of a 401k into an annuity, all of the payments are ultimately taxable because all that money originally was pre-tax money. You could just take a lump sum distribution from your company. And thinking back, this last example, you've got $2.9 million. You could just take all $2.9 million and pay the tax. Well, you don't want to pay taxes on $2.9 million, but there are some tax things you could do that you could average the taxation out over uh, it's called the forward averaging option if I remember right that's five seven or ten years is how long you can average those taxes out and of course you can ultimately transfer to an IRA and then do withdrawals from the IRA again how much of that is going to be taxable and the question is or the answer is all of it's taxable because it's all coming from pre-tax income. So again, just kind of review. What are the major sources of retirement income? We have the, 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 the current kinds of business programs, personal programs, personal investments that are outside of the retirement planning concept. And of course, we have Social Security. But with Social Security, do you do full-time? Do you retire early? What happens if you retire late? With the retirement plans, we have annuity plans, you have lump sum distributions, they talk about the 10-year forward averaging, it's 10 years, and we have IRA issues, or IRA rollovers, individual IRAs, you can do systematic withdrawals, you can do regular withdrawals. Again, there's a variety of sources where income can come from fair amount of uncertainty with all of this issue. What about an annuity? How do you set up an annuity? We talked about variable annuities, but you can do cash surrenders. You can take installment periods for a certain period of times or at fixed amounts. Uh, you can do joint and survivor kinds of annuities 
where if the first person dies, the second person will continue to get a percentage of their benefits. And again, we can also set up life annuities with guaranteed per pay payments for certain periods of time. So again, lots of questions, lots of choices to make once we get to retirement. And how do those proceeds ultimately go? Again, we don't need to beat this in the ground too much, but this does describe some basic things. Here's the joint and survivor. 100% go. you could set it up so that whatever your payments are, 100% goes to the survivor. You could set it up so that only 50% goes to the survivor. If you think about the payments, if 100% go to the survivor, the payments are going to be much smaller to begin with because it has to last much longer over two lifespans rather than just one what about survivor benefits we can set it up for 10 years 15 20 years certain again many questions the ultimate decisions that we have then is do you take a lump sum or do you do an ira thing and again this is a tax question we have this two couple they're both 65 they're going to retire at the end of the year john has a choice of $2,000 a month for life, or take a $250,000 lump sum. An immediate IRA rollover ultimately might be the best option. If John leaves to be 100, the annuity option is the best. So the longer you expect to live, the more likely the annuity question ultimately um, looks favorable um, to move forward with. Again, we're talking about distributions, right? 59 and a half is the soonest. 70 and a half is the latest. You can withdraw from IRAs systematically, or you can do it in an insurance plan. The personal investment process, typically done through some kind of a brokerage firm. The insurance plans are typically done, obviously, by insurance companies. Some other kinds of questions. What if you take loans from a qualified plan, right? Taking a loan out, they say, may be better than a withdrawal since there's no tax or penalty. However, taxes might ultimately be imposed if you don't pay the money back, right? So the plan's going to withdraw funds from this account, and it's not going to keep it. So let's say you have it in a really good um, a stock port uh, mutual fund. Well, if the mutual fund company is going to give you a loan from this qualified plan, they're not going to keep the money in that plan. They're going to withdraw the money from this high return mutual fund, and they're going to put it into a money market account. It's going to keep it there as collateral. So as you pay it back, that money is then put back into the uh, other account. And as I understand it, they don't move that until the entire loan is paid back. So it's all there as collateral to cover the loan until the loan is paid back. Might be a better thing since there's no tax or penalty. But on the other hand, you know, you do lose some income while this is happening. What happens if you want to retire early? It's possible. It's just going to take some strategizing. We're going to have to plan to do our retirement accounts in certain formats. We talked a little bit of earlier about something called a 72T account, where you can withdraw money. It'll be taxed, but there's no penalty. And again, we keep bringing up this minimum distribution rule idea, right? You have to worry about taking distributions when you need to take them, and there are certain time frames that that's important. So in conclusion, we basically have a strategy, right? The basic structure, we have six steps. We have to figure out what our monthly budget's going to be. We have to figure out what our secure, Social Security income will be to cover that budget, right? Once we have done that, we have to tell our employer to take our lump sum, and they're going to do something with that money. They're either going to move it, give it to us in a lump sum, which we probably don't want, but let's say they're going to transfer it to an IRA. Well, in this IRA, we actually really want two mutual funds. We want a mutual fund that's a money market account, and we want a, a mutual fund 
that has some growth potential. The purpose of this is our spending money, because we'll need it for the next year, we'll put enough money in there for the year in order to cover um, our spending over the next year. That way that money is certain and safe. And then periodically we will withdraw money from the high growth account and we will move that in bits and pieces to the money market account. So we can take advantage of some high growth opportunities, but yet we can have some certainty with, with respect to our next year's um, income. If we have a shortfall, then obviously we need to do some planning today for that. And again, in the end, we have to be aware, once we turn 70 and a half, there could be mandatory withdrawals that we have to take. Now, these, this combo strategy is just a basic strategy. You can move things in and out. You can change some of the context, I guess. But in generally, it's just one of the many options that we have available uh, once you get to retirement. So retirement planning, right, to get to reply, retirement plan, uh, to retirement is one issue. But then once you get there, there is a whole new set of questions we have to answer. So the this uh, financial planning process from today till death is a long process that needs assistance. Frequently, you're going to need to talk to professionals to get an understanding of what the current economic situation is, what the current tax situation is, and you're going to need to get some advice on how to plan the rest of your financial life. That's the end of chapter 14.